In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Phyllis Bronner was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. On behalf of my sister Lois and my brother Tom, we are very grateful that you have joined us today for my mom's. My mom's memorial service. I'm sure glad you're not here. Because this would be a sure a lot worse, a lot harder for me to get through. But it's an honor for me to, to be able to, to honor my mom. So what we would like for you to do is share memories with us. You're there at our YouTube channel. And if you'll know, if you've ever been on YouTube before, you know you can leave comments. And we'd like to hear your stories about uh, my mom and my dad. And, and uh, if you would do that, that would be, uh, would be great for us. The Christian community gathers with a mixture of tears. The tears of sorrow, of losing somebody we love, but the joy of knowing that death has been swallowed up in victory. And my mom is with Christ, experiencing something we can't imagine. And for that, we give thanks to God, even as we miss her. This is a service of hope. Christ has risen from the dead, and he promises to all who die in him that they too will rise from the dead. And we look forward to that day when Jesus Christ will return in the fullness of his glory and raise the dead. And those who have trusted in him and believed in him and held on to him will live with him forever. Until that day, we pray God would keep us faithful. We pray. O God of mercy and grace, we give thanks for your loving kindness to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. 
Grant that we also may be faithful to death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may have guessed uh, that we were recording this. I don't think I could have done a live streaming of my mom's service um, already, just, just a little bit of uh, becoming emotional. Uh, but today, uh, as we turn to God's Word now, uh, it's really kind of interesting. For my daily devotions, I always read a psalm. And I go, uh, go uh, just one psalm after the other, and, and I repeat when I get done again. Uh, today, the psalm that I had for my devotion is Psalm 91 which is the psalm that my mom had chosen for her service. So it is an honor to read this psalm. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shelter, a shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your side, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked." Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the, Lord, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. 
When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And then we look at a passage from Isaiah that gives us hope that one day the, the shroud of death will be removed and all tears wiped away. From Isaiah 25, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well-refined. And he, swallow, he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And then turning to Paul's letter in the Romans where at a time like this, we ask the question, can death separate us from the love of God? Is there anything that can separate us from the love of God? And Paul's answer is, a, is an emphatic no. Not even death can separate us from the love of God. From Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are, are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Trouble 
We believe in a God who understands the pain of death. Jesus himself suffering on a cross for us, being buried in a tomb. Just a few hours before he would be betrayed, before he would be mistreated, beaten, sentenced to death, and nailed to a cross, he had an intimate moment with his disciples in an upper room. And he shared these words from John 14 with those disciples. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. God's word. So I I have to admit something right away. Um, I don't trust my memories. (laughs) The older I get, the more I realize that my memories are kind of tainted with my perception of what I want them to be. That's okay. It just is part of the reality. And, and I also have to admit that what I'm going to share with you in this message are my memories of my mom, which are not going to be the same memories that Lois has or that Tom has of my mom. And then I also have to say one other thing. I, I, I can't claim, because I still want to have a relationship with my sister and my brother, I can't claim that I was mom's favorite child but I can claim that I was her baby. And she always let me know that I was her baby. When I would go visit her at Solvang, which I did once a year, and spend some time with her, and, and she would take me down to the cafeteria and introduce me to people, inevitably I would get introduced uh, as her baby. <laughs> and I just kind of let that go. I would always be her baby. But I do have some memories I'd like to share with you of my mom. You know, I I remember that I was very privileged as her baby. Because you see, Janine and Lois and Tom, when they were off at school, from the time I was three to the time I was six, I had mom all to myself, watching Queen for the Day, (laughs) ironing handkerchiefs. She let me iron my dad's handkerchiefs. Um, going to the park just with her and having a picnic. And and Lois and Tom, you may wonder why I had such a hard time going to school. (laughs) I remember some words I never really wanted to hear because I was a good kid. There's no arguing that. I was a good kid. I didn't get in trouble like everybody else did. But the times that I did, the words I hated to hear from my mom were, wait till your dad gets home. Because I knew that as soon as those words came out of her mouth, there was a spanking waiting for me. (laughs) I remember that the kitchen was her domain. I remember that she knitted in front of the television. And and I remember her cookies. Especially the sugar cookies. So I have to confess, Tom Lewis, that if you went to the cookie jar or the cookie coffee tin looking for sugar cookies and they weren't there, I had eaten them, I'm sure. I, I remember as a, the baby, my mom would take me uh, when I was small and, and uh, she would, at Grace Lutheran Church, she would take me and, and set me on the counter of the Sunday school uh, um, I don't know, it was, it was Nook or uh, I don't remember what exactly we called it, but there was a counter there. Uh, and she would, I was pretty small, unlike now. Uh, and she'd set me on top. She'd me up, put, me up, put me up on top of the counter. 
And I remember that uh, all the, the women at Grace coming by and saying that they wish they had my eyelashes. <laughs> you see, mom didn't want the limelight. She always wanted to be in the background. She was, it seemed like forever that mom was the assistant Sunday school superintendent at Grace Lutheran Church. I don't remember a time when she wasn't uh, growing up. But she never, never was the Sunday school superintendent. That was always somebody else's job. She didn't want to, to be up front. My mom had a servant's heart. It's for that reason that I've chosen just three verses from Mark's gospel that I'd like to focus our attention on here as we think about my mom and, and her faith in Jesus Christ. The words are from John chapter 10, beginning of verse uh, 30, uh, 43, where Jesus says to his disciples, But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be a slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom. So let me give a little background to this text, just, just a little bit. Jesus is traveling with his disciples. And if you read Mark's gospel, Mark's gospel is all about the journey with Jesus. I'm doing a Bible study on that right now, the journey of Jesus to Jerusalem. He's always on the way. He's always going. And, and now he's on the way to Jerusalem, heading up to Jerusalem as you would always do from wherever you were to celebrate Passover. His disciples are with him, his 12 disciples, and they have this great expectation that Jesus is coming to the temple in Jerusalem and he's going to set up his messianic kingdom on earth. And they're excited because they're his entourage. They're his closest buddies. And they are expecting greatness for themselves. And they're arguing about who's going to be sitting at his right hand, who will be at his left hand, and, and getting all upset with each other, jockeying for position as we humans do. That is until Jesus sets them straight. And talks about the fact that he himself, he the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Well, my mom, she had that servant's heart. Doing what she did in the background. My dad, though, on the other hand, that's a different story. They were so well mixed, weren't they? They were matched so well. My dad loved the limelight. He loved to stand up front and to talk sometimes way too much, right? People who are in Bible study at Grace. <laughs> he loved to talk. He loved to talk to us kids too. And, and, and we would sometimes just want to say, Dad, just be quiet for a while, please. Can we just... But my dad liked that limelight. That was not mom, not at all. Think about how they both died. It's so, God is so amazing in how he allows, even in death, cruelest uh, moment of our life it was so typical. My dad, we all gathered around my dad. We all got there. We all got to be with him. We all got to say goodbye to him. My mom, feeling okay in the morning and then afternoon not feeling as well, laying down on the couch and never waking up. And nobody able to say goodbye to her. And maybe we're a little bit upset that we didn't get to say goodbye to her, but when you think about it from my mom's perspective, it's so much my mom. Well, my mom and dad were a good match, very different from each other. But what bound them together was a deep love that they had for each other. I don't think any of us would ever question the love that my dad had for my mom and my mom had for my dad. And that love that they had for each other, both of them would tell you, was a reflection of the love that God had for them. They, they expressed it differently. My dad was much better with his words, and he could t verbalize about his faith much easier than my mom could. And my mom would do it with her actions. But for both of them, both of them knew the love of God in Christ Jesus their Lord. They were passionate about Jesus. I never questioned. 
I never questioned their faith. I never questioned where, what where they were rooted in their life. It was obvious. You see, something else you need to say here, though. I, we can laugh and we can share stories, and I'm hoping you're going to write some things down in the, in the comments below this video. Um, but I don't want to make my mom out to be perfect. My mom was like all of us, a broken person too. And, and with being, my mom being so quiet, I, I don't know that I ever understood what she really wrestled with. But I know that, that there was stuff in her life that she regretted. There are times, it, when we look at just the, in the, the generality of things, that she didn't love God with all of her heart and, and she didn't love others and she loved herself. That's the human condition. And I'm not making her worse or better than anybody. It's what we all are. None of us are perfect. What mom understood was all of that sin and all that brokenness in her life were laid down at the foot of the cross. Jesus bore it for her. When she was baptized as a baby in Minnesota, all of her sin that separated her from God was buried in Jesus' tomb. That's what Paul says about baptism. And God started her on a journey a journey that was characterized by grace. You know, my mom knew grace. She did. And I find that kind of uh, appropriate too because the church that she was a part of for most all of her life, Grace Lutheran Church in Eugene, Oregon, it's hard for me to believe that with mom's death, there's not going to be a Bronner at Grace for probably around 80 years now that there's been a Bronner there. And those of you from Grace are, are, are part of this memorial service. You know, you meant a great deal to my mom and dad. You meant all of us. We all, all of our faith were nurtured there. The pastors who were part of our congregation, who, who, who nurtured our faith, who cared for us. You're a very important part of my mom's life. And it's an honor to share this moment with you as well. But my mom understood grace. And because she understood grace, I believe with all my heart, right now my mom is with Christ. I don't know, and I say this more, more now at funerals uh, than ever, I don't know what that means or what it looks like. I don't have to. Even when scripture tells us what heaven will be like, it's still hard for us human beings to even comprehend what it is. What I know is she's with Jesus, and that's the most important part. I know my father, my sister, my grandparents, others who died in the faith before are there too. I don't understand, I don't need to, but it gives me comfort to know that my mom is with Jesus. And the father who had breathed that life into her has received that life back to himself, but it's still not the end. The Christian community is a crazy group of people because we believe something that doesn't make any sense in the world. We believe that this Jesus who was crucified, buried in a grave, rose from the dead, victorious over death, conquering death. Where's your sting? Death, where's your victory? Jesus has conquered it. And the Bible says that he is the first fruits of those who believe in him. And what does that mean? Well, it means this, that all who die in Christ will experience a physical resurrection. We believe that this Jesus, who died, who was buried, who has risen and ascended to the Father, is coming back in the fullness of glory, not knowing when. Chances are I'll be dead too sometime and experience the resurrection. Maybe in my lifetime, maybe not. But the surety of the resurrection is coming. And so the ashes that our family is going to lay to rest at Willamette National Cemetery sometime when this COVID-19 situation kind of settles down, um, they're going to rise again. 
because death cannot keep my mom down. So, I, I usually don't do this, but I need to make a personal comment here, especially to my aunt and uncle Jean and Dwayne. The two of you were Christ to my mom. You put flesh on Christ for her. You took her phone calls at three in the morning and whenever she would call you and worrying about her health. You took her to all of her doctor's appointments along with my sister-in-law, Sue. You took her on errands. But you didn't just take her to things. You loved her. And you let her know how much you loved her. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we, we're surrounded by death and it's painful. We see a world that's fallen around. It seems like more we see in this world is death and life. And yet today, if we watch and participate in this memorial service, we celebrate life. Life that is rooted deeply in your son, Jesus. We thank you for Phyllis Raby Bronner. What an amazing gift you gave to this world. And her servant's heart that this world was blessed with. But we thank you most of all that is because your grace for her that she now experiences your presence. And she encourages us on not to lose heart, not to give up, to continue to cling to you because it's worth it. Our life here is so short compared to eternity with you. We thank you that she lived that faith. And may we continue that legacy of faith and realize that today is the most important day of our life as we gather in the homes with our loved ones, as we interact with each other, today is the day to let them know that we love them, to show them that we love them, not just say it. And we thank you for the grace that covers us too. The same mercy you had for my mom and my dad is the mercy you have for us the grace you have for us. Oh God, we thank you that even though we're scattered around this nation, we are participating in one service and with one heart and with one voice we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
once again on behalf of my sister Lois and my brother Tom. We are very grateful that you joined us for this memorial service. Please, please share your memories with all of us. Anybody can look at those memories. Uh, if you would leave, uh, leave them in the, in the uh, comments below this video, we'd love to hear your remembrances of my mom as well. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.